You're watching WOTV for Women. We've taken the show on the road. We are at Walker Fire Station number two. Tonight, it's all about fire prevention and safety. Firefighters from Western and Southwestern Michigan are gathered here because today we are talking about fire safety and prevention. There's an exciting program that is giving families the opportunity to play it safe. Thanks to all these experts. Michael McLear of Escape Fire Safety, you have been busy putting together all kinds of great things, haven't you? We have been, Miranda, and a question I want to ask you, what should most homes have to keep families safe, but we're finding many homes in West Michigan don't have these devices. All right, I'm gonna go with smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. That's right, absolutely. Oh, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide alarms. And that's what we have right here. Okay, you have a few of these things. We do, we're launching a new program through WOTV for Women and Kitta and the Home Depot and Escape Fire Safety called Operation Save a Life. I love the name. This is an exciting opportunity, Miranda, where we can get smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms in installed in homes by trained firefighters all across West Michigan. How much does it cost families? Zero. It's oh, totally come on, you're free. Kidding. And you love free. I love free. Absolutely. So it's totally free. All right, so we're going to give out free free fire prevention tools for families. Absolutely. And education to go along with it and the trained firefighters are going to be going into homes and installing the alarms so we can keep our families safe. All right, so how does a family get a hold of one of these if they're watching tonight and say, you know what, I need one of those and I don't know how to put it together? We have a great conversation comprehensive list on WOTVforwomen.com or they can email us at escape at WOTV for women and make sure that again those smoke alarms are installed and they're in the homes where we need them to keep everybody safe. You know oftentimes we'll go to the store we'll purchase these things we get them home we either put them in wrong or we put them in and then they go off and we don't That's replace right. the batteries I mean so you're gonna go through the whole process with us. We will and our fire fatalities are actually up dramatically in West Michigan third year in a row so this is a program that it's going to make a difference. It's a program that's going to save lives, and we're going to be able to provide fire departments the tools to keep their own communities safe. This is an awesome program, Michael. I love it. Now, I know earlier you had the chance to go out with Eva Gita Cooper and show her the proper way to install a fire alarm. That's right. That's right, because we want to make sure those smoke alarms are properly installed. We teach families how to maintain the smoke alarm, make sure that they're tested once a month, and make sure those carbon monoxide alarms are tested as well, and knowing what to do when the alarm sounds, making sure we get out and stay out quickly and safely. Perfect. Here's Eva with that story. We spoke to a local firefighter about what you can do to stay safe. The answer begins and ends with smoke alarms. Families have less than three minutes when a fire occurs and when the smoke alarm sounds. So working smoke alarms are very important that every home and every family should have. They should be installed on every level of the home and making sure they're inside and outside the bedroom for best protection. Working smoke alarms more than double the chance of a family safely escaping the home during fire conditions. As a firefighter, I've been on location and had families come to us and say that that working smoke alarm was really the reason they were able to get out quickly and safely. The working part is key. You must check to see if your smoke alarm is functioning properly. Smoke alarms should be tested once a month and non-long life battery smoke alarms should be changed twice a year. You should also replace your smoke alarms every 10 years. And it's not just smoke alarms, it's also essential to have carbon monoxide alarms. Carbon monoxide is the silent killer because it's odorless, tasteless, and colorless, and it's important that we have working carbon monoxide alarms on every level of our home. West Michigan has experienced an increase in home fires. Three of the common causes, alternative heating, such as portable heaters, wood stoves, or even fireplaces that are not properly maintained or installed. Secondly, unattended cooking. It's important that families stand by their pan and always remain in the kitchen when cooking. And lastly, electrical fires tend to peak this time of year as well. Working smoke alarms do save lives. That's the takeaway for families. The best thing you can do is to have these alarms ready and in working order. Make sure you and your family maintain and have those smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms to keep your family safe all throughout the year.
When it comes to smoke alarm installation, the folks in Allegan County have been leading the way. All right, so how long have you been involved in the program as a pilot project? Well, they started uh, a year and a half ago, and we met a few times in Lansing to go over the ground rules for how we're going to set this up, and we did our first installs in March of 2014. All right, so you've had your teams out in, in homes working with families, putting those smoke alarms together. Has it been effective? Uh, yes, most of the people are so appreciative that we do this and most people didn't understand uh, the life expectancy of the old smoke alarms. They're going, oh, we thought they lasted forever. So you're going out, you're installing, but you're also We're talking teaching. to people teaching. and teaching. All right, so from your perspective, why do you think these kinds of programs truly are going to make a difference? Uh, smoke detectors are the first defense that a homeowner has, and it literally, you know, gives you that extra few minutes to get out in case of a, uh, you know, a, a fire. Um, we had an instance a month ago, uh, 4.30 in the morning, we had a family of four that had uh, a fire. Smoke detectors alerted them, and the female that heard the detectors and told their other family members was actually in the room where the fire had started. So it is just very critical to give you those extra few minutes before we get there to get you out of the house. It's awesome. Thank you for the work you're doing in Allegan County. We really appreciate it. We'll be right back with more of Where You Live. Fifth Third Bank is proud to be a part of Where You Live. We are joined by third graders from Zinzer Elementary School. Hi, guys. Hi. Aren't these kids so cool? It's great to have them here at Walker Fire Station number two. You know, we are talking about fire prevention and education. We brought in some experts, my good friend, Firefighter Scott, Firefighter Kevin, and, of course, the amazing Jake, the fire safety dog. Can you guys say hi, Jake? Hi. Jake. You know, Mr. Kevin, what are some of the key things that third graders and kids of all ages need to know when it comes to being being safe? Well, you know, when we visit them at school and stuff like that, we talk about uh, stop, drop, and roll and 911, and we're going to talk about home escape planning and stuff like that. We practice fire drills at school, and we're going to talk about practicing fire drills at home and the important parts that we need to have uh, in place for that. We talk about working smoke alarms, right? We all know what they sound like. We talked about that back in October with the kids and uh, just all kinds of good stuff on how to stay safe. So. Why do you think it's so important to take that message right into the schools? Um, this is where the kids are, are used to learning and that's where we need to meet them. Um, if they're, when they're in the school setting, they're in that learning mindset and uh, it's just a great place to meet them and catch them when they're at their best and just work it into. And we've been fortunate that uh, we can work it into kind of some of the lessons that they have going on in class and use some of the same terms and life skills that they use in the, in the classroom and in the school. Um, and it works out real well. We have a good time with it. Well, thank you so much. Would you guys like to see my friend Jake go low and crawl out like we're supposed to do yeah. in a fire? Is that something we could do, Mr. Scott? Try it. Let's it try it. It is a slippery floor. Let's make way for Jake. And we're gonna watch Jake this is what we all should do if there's ever smoke in our rooms. We're going to go low and crawl out. So if you want to go low, we can go low by Jake, too. And Jake will show us what we're supposed to do. Can we all back up just a little yep, bit? Yep, let's give Jake a little bit of room. And it's fun to be right here in the fire station with all the firefighters and the fire trucks. Okay, you ready? We're going to show them what we do. We get low and go, right? Jake, getting low and going. That's what we're supposed to do if there's ever a fire. Let's give Jake a round of applause. Good morning, boys and girls. We're so excited to be here. We're at Delton Kellogg Elementary School in Barry County. It's a fantastic day to teach children and adults about fire safety. We're partnering with the Delton Fire Department as well as the school district to make sure that children and families have good choices and know about fire safety all throughout the year. You always get out and... We started with a school assembly here. We had all of the students and all of the classes in the elementary school. We talked about some of the objectives, get out and stay out making sure that families have two ways out of any room, making sure they have that very important meeting place once outside. And then we also are going to follow the day up, finish the day up with the Escape Mobile Training Center where children and faculty are going to be able to experience what happens when theatrical fog comes in that looks like smoke and the importance of, again, practicing the escape
safe plan, crawling low underneath the smoke, all of the things that we're going to cover here in the assembly. And we have Jake the fire safety dog. Jake's always a big hit. Our black Labrador retriever who teaches families how to get out and stay out, get low and go, and make sure that they go outside to that meeting place. It's an awesome experience when we can be a positive role model and teach our children and families that they can make a difference. They have the power and the ability under fire is everyone's fight to stay safe and make sure that they practice fire safety all throughout the year. Helen DeVos Children's Hospital is proud to be a part of where you live. We're back with more of our fire prevention and fire safety special where you live. We are thrilled to have with us the state fire marshal. And, you know, today we have gathered firefighters from across western and southwestern Michigan. Why is it so important to bring communities together to promote fire safety? Randall, first of all, good morning to you and thanks for having me. The message is safety. These guys are the backbone of safety. Everybody on a day-to-day -day basis drive by fire stations, they're, they're, they're looking at reactionary. The bell goes off, somebody's house is burning, they move. What these programs, Operation Save a Life, the SAFE program, that's all about safety. That's prevention, it's preventative maintenance as we do with our furnaces and our home, our cars. It's the same thing. These guys are the backbones. These programs that we have going right now, they're not just giveaway programs. These people are tracking the installations, they're doing the installations, so we know if there is a fire, heaven forbid, we can document, hey, we need to get the smoke detectors, smoke alarms in this area of the city, this area of the county, wherever. That's what we're doing. I think that's awesome that you're really looking at where are the areas where we need to step in and you're putting the programs together to get in there to help save lives. I respect that. Miranda, it's data. It's data shows where the fires are, where the needs, and where the wants are. That's what we're recording. Well, thank you for looking at that and taking it so serious. What's that number one thing you really want West Michigan families to think about when it comes to fire safety, fire prevention? The biggest thing that you can always do is, is you have to have the smoke alarm. Number one, it's everybody, I'll, give you, I'll leave you with this a little bit. Everybody thinks that when they go to bed and you had a fire, the smoke is gonna wake you up. Quite the contrary, it puts you into a deeper sleep that's why we have smoke alarms. I didn't know that. I mean, thank you. Thank you for enlightening me. You're welcome. All right, so when we've got programs where we're giving away those smoke alarms and those carbon monoxide um, detectors, we want families who don't have them to pick up that phone and give us a call and get those, call. don't we? Call, call, call your fire department, call the news channel, we'll get them to them. I love it. Thank you so much. You we appreciate you joining us. All right, when it comes to fire safety, take a look at this. Safety, it's what we want for this community. For our home. For our family. The Grand Rapids Fire Department is dedicated to fire safety. That's why we're offering this community a huge service. If you live in Southeast Community, Southeast Inn, West Grand, Garfield Park, or Creston, we'll install smoke alarms in your home for free. 100% free. No cost, no catch. They install smoke alarms, do a brief home assessment, and that's it. Smoke alarms save lives. So make the call. You can have smoke alarms installed free of charge. Want a fire safety assessment? We'll do that too. Just a few questions, super quick and super easy. Another free service. Our families and our homes are worth it. Call the Residential Safety Program at 456-3966. Let the Grampus Fire Department make you safer in your home. Programs like Operation Save a Life could not happen without great partnerships with community organizations. Why do you feel partnerships really make things happen and make an impact? Well, partnerships can be right within your own jurisdiction. For example, um, without the support of the city administration, the elected officials, our ability to go out and do some of the programs in homes, the proactive stuff, um, wouldn't happen. And that's a really important piece because they're the ones that allow us to make this happen. And you know, we applaud those forward-thinking organizations that see that it takes everyone coming together for the better of the community. Absolutely. The proactiveness is what really keeps a community safe. Um, fire departments have long been around and they're reactive uh, when they are responding to a call for service. But if we have a smoke detector in a home that allows a person to get out, we minimize the injuries, we minimize the damage, 
um, it's just a win-win all the way around. Thank you so much. You know, another partnership that makes this thing extra special is a partnership with the American Red Cross. Tell me a little bit about that. Thank you. Well, we are working on our home fire preparedness campaign nationally, and in West Michigan so far, we have had the opportunity to partner with local fire departments, and so far we've actually installed over 59 smoke alarms in residents' homes who have not, who never even had them, or maybe had them, but their batteries weren't working. And so it's been a really great opportunity for us to reach out to the community, um, to get out into the community and talk about just fire education, preparedness, making plans, um, and also installing these smoke detectors. It's been great. I think that's awesome that you've come alongside the firefighters and you're out there, you're installing, you're communicating, you're educating. I've seen you at a lot of events <laughs> and your message is always safety. Yes. What have you learned through this whole process? Uh, like, like she was saying, it's, it's, a, it's a group effort. Uh, we all have to work together. It's about making a plan, um, putting that into action, and really just putting our heart into it and getting out in the community and meeting people. So. Well, you guys do a great job. Thank you, American Red Cross, for partnering with firefighters across the state to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Priority Health is proud to be a part of where you live. Here at Walker Fire Station number two, it's extra special because we have the chief who lets us get a behind the scenes look and we have firefighter Zach with us. Chief, let's talk a little bit about the equipment the guys have to wear. Well, this is some of the equipment that if we do have a structure fire that the guys have to put on. And one of the things that we start with is the pants. And we have the pants, they're, they're called bunker pants. And they pull the pants up, put the suspenders up over their shoulders. You know, this is the first thing that they have to do when they get ready to go in. The next thing is they put a hood on. This is a protective hood so that they don't have fire impinging on their skin or heat. The next thing he'll put on is he'll put on his coat. That he, jacket looks heavy. That jacket is heavy. It's probably in the neighborhood of 20 pounds. So Zach's got the coat on. Now what, this big tank? Now he puts this tank on, okay? He and gets the tank on. Then he also has a helmet and a face piece that he needs to put on. And we practice this all the time so that they are efficient with putting this on. And, and you know, we want to make sure that they're safe, make sure everything's covered up. There's no exposed skin, so no heat or flame can, can burn his skin. Mm -hmm. He'll put his gloves on, and then he'll hook up to his air tank, and he'll start breathing air out of the tank on his back. Then he's ready to go ahead and enter a burning structure. Zach? He's ready to go. You are ready to go. Nice job. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, it's time to try something new. We're here at the fire station, and I thought, why not? All right, so what are we going to do, Zach? All right, well, the first thing we've got to do is turn on our pump. What are we so hoping to, am I going to learn to do what? You're going to operate this pump and get water out to a fire hose out the front. And then after that, you're gonna spray some water. Are you sure I can handle this? We'll help you. <laughs> All right. All right, so the first thing I did was turn down our pump, so now it's engaged. Okay. Um, the next thing we have to do is get water into the pump from the tank so on board. Pull this out. So Got we it. pull this handle, uh -huh. okay? Now, all of these other handles are labeled with what hose we want to operate. The one we want to operate, Miranda, is the front bumper discharge. So if you just grab that handle and is give this it a pull, pull hard? it's gonna pull a little hard. Wow. All right. And now our hose line is Front charged. Front bumper discharge ready. We're ready to go. Um, we've got different gauges to let us know where the pressures are. We look okay. And we look good, so I think we're ready to spray some water. All right, let's spray water. All right, Miranda, so this is the fire hose. This is our tip right here. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to step up and grab the pistol grip with one hand. With the other hand, you're going to pull the bale back, and that's going to open up the valve so the water can spray out. Is this going to have a lot of torque? Like, I mean, uh, you feel it? Normally it would. You'll feel a little bit of pressure, but we won't go too hard on you. dialed on you. it down for yep. me. All right, so, so I'm left-handed, so what, what You're do you left-handed. I would recommend stepping over onto this side okay. then. Okay. Okay, so grab the pistol grip with your left hand. Pistol grip grab. Yep, now grab the bale with your right. You got okay. the bale? And then just pull it back whenever you're ready. Wow. How far can this shoot? Uh, we can shoot up to about 100 feet with this hose, but you're going to start getting wet here shortly. This is really cool. Thank you so much. It gives well. me such respect for what you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. 
The beautiful piece of this whole thing is that we're working with local fire departments across West Michigan to help even with installation. Let's talk a little bit about what this is going to mean for the Saugatuck community. Well, it's the single most effective thing you could do for a community to protect them, and that is smoke detectors. In the com campaign, I'm happy to be part of the coalition that is participating in this. I think we should take a more proactive approach rather than a reactive approach, and this certainly is part of that. So in Norton Shores, you're going to have a lot of carbon monoxide alarms, you're going to have the smoke alarms, and you're going to go right out into people's homes and put these things in. That is correct. Um, if people are in need of smoke detectors, they can contact our department and we'll put them on a list and uh, we'll rotate that out and we'll get our firefighters, our fire inspectors out into their homes and uh, install these smoke detectors and work towards keeping our community safe. I think that so, is totally awesome. It people are going to believe about that it. you're really going to do this for them. We're but excited. I know you are. We are. We're going to be out there doing door to door to work on this. That's awesome. All right, in Muskegon Heights, yes. to be able to, when someone calls you and says, you know, I want to keep my family safe, I can't afford it, or I don't know what I'm doing, that you're going to be able to go right out there. What's that going to mean to your community? It's a great deal to our community because we, we have a tremendous need in the Muskegon Heights area. This program here, sponsored by KIDA, is going to help continue a program that we started and allow us to serve more people in the Muskegon Heights area. And now with the new element of adding the carbon monoxide detector, we're enhancing what the department's going to be able to do for the safety of the community as a whole. It's a really exciting program. It's a really great thing that KIDA's doing, and we really appreciate what Wood TV is doing also. It's great to be a part of it, isn't it? All right, so we're going to hook you up. You're going to load your arms. You're going to bring this stuff back into your community. Why are you encouraging any family who has a question about what's happening with fire safety to give you a call right away? Well, smoke detectors are huge, as everybody said. Um, it's one of the leading causes of death in house fires. Uh, the smoke gets to the people, not the actual fire. So early detection is huge, and we just need to get detectors in our residences that don't have them. All right, so if your family is watching tonight and you say, I think I need this, you do. Head to our website right now, wotvforwomen.com. Look at all the different areas. If you have any questions, send us an email. We'll do what we can to make sure we keep your family safe. It's a promise. All right, we ready to load these things up, guys? We're ready. All right, let's load them up and take them into West Michigan. When it comes to fire safety, we can't do it without giving a shout out to our good friend Jake, the fire safety dog, and the full Escape Fire Safety team. For the past 20 years, Escape Fire Safety has been providing education and information to kids and families around West Michigan. Whether it's at our park parties with the smokehouse or in classrooms talking to students, they have done an amazing job. Thank you, Escape Fire Safety, for all that you do to keep us safe. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you to our third graders from Zinzer Elementary and to our friends here at Walker for hosting us and all of the firefighters who have joined us today. Keep up the great work. Let's give a big round of applause for our firefighters. And what is the important message we learned today? Fire safety! Have a great evening. Here's a final thought I'd like to leave you with tonight.